Welcome everybody to today's Building My Legacy podcast. I have with me Howie Zales. Howie is unusual. You will not meet people like Howie very often because he has one of those interesting perspectives and backgrounds that we all kind of look at as a, we have a glimpse into what goes on behind the cameras, right? <laughs> and Howie is behind the cameras producing films. So he's an Emmy award-winning camera operator who turned his passion for television broadcasting into several entrepreneurial endeavors. Howie created HJZ Productions Inc. in 2000 to address the need for professional level sports crew and staffing in New York market. Under his leadership, HJZ Productions grew to a multi-million nationwide provider of top talent in the broadcasting field. And in 2019, Howie and his team founded uh, Veridity Entertainment Services, Inc. I'm sorry, I was looking at how to pronounce that, um, which initially focused on staffing in non-union markets. With the onset of COVID and the pandemic in 2020, He quickly pivoted to offering best in class broadcast quality live streams of professional sports, um, doing interviews, corporate interviews and meetings and religious services. So he has an amazing breadth of background, um, also a depth of background in television. So Howie, tell us your backstory. Tell us how you got into this. Tell us the journey and to sports. Great. Uh, great to meet you. Good to talk with you. Honored to be here. Thank you. Um, well, I, I wanted to play professional baseball when I was growing up. And when I saw that that may not happen, I knew I needed a, uh, an alternative or a, a backup, so to speak. And I, I needed one elective when I was in 11th grade. And um, it, this class sounded really great. It's It was a TV production class with a trip to NBC studios and 30 rock and a tour and, a, and to watch a TV show being taped. Uh, and I was like, that can't be that bad. And uh, so I signed up and, you know, I fell in love with television and I knew that I needed to combine my love of not only baseball, but sports in general with television. And uh, I, I knew where I was headed in a career and uh, I just needed to f- figure out and find out how to get there. And uh, it, it started off just doing um, camera work for, um, you know, Yankees, Mets, Rangers, Knicks, all the New York local teams. And uh, one day I did a horse race. I was hired by a company and the director was an NBC, the NBC sports a director at the time and I did a good job and, and everything. And he said, Hey, we're starting this new football league. And this is back in 2000 called the XFL. Are you, are you interested? And I said, sure. And he's like, well, why don't you come to, you know, do a f- few football games for us first, see what your football experience is. And uh, I wound up shooting Notre Dame football for NBC for 20 years. A wow. uh, place that well, as a kid, I didn't even know existed um and it's one of the most storied places on earth Notre Dame and I'm honored that I have had the ability to do that and so I ended up working with uh, NBC doing Olympics um Super Bowls and many of other events for 20 years and simultaneously while working for NBC I met the people during the XFL the other side of the XFL which were the WWE people the World Wrestling Entertainment and uh, shortly after the first XFL ended, they needed an extra camera person and they called me and uh, I wound up shooting wrestling for the last 20 years. I've done the last 20 WrestleManias and it's been an awesome experience. Wow. Okay. So out of all those different experiences, which one was the highlight for you? The highlight? Um, probably being... Uh, standing next to the women gymnastics uh, team when they won the gold medal in Beijing and London. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. what was it about that experience? That- Just knowing that being a part of history, I was right next to Michael Phelps when he won his first gold medal in 
in Italy and that was in Greece. And that was also an amazing experience knowing what he became. And um, so getting to be part of sports history so close to it, it has been an amazing, amazing experience. What have you learned most from that experience? What, what that, has that taught you as a person, as a human being? It taught me that if you have the will to, and to, to have success and the drive, you will get it. You, you, you're the only one that stands in your way. If you just open up and, and, you know, I started out in little, doing the smallest TV show, sports TV shows there are, and to be in the top, in the pinnacle, of working the Olympics, working Super Bowls, you know, that, that is only you can stop yourself. Amazing. It, that is uh, that is so true, and we often lose sight of that, don't we? Yes. So, as you have worked with um, live streaming, you've seen a lot of changes happening in the industry. What are mm -hmm. some of those changes, and what do you see will be the future? How will things continue to evolve? Well, with the onset of COVID a year ago, the, the TV business took uh, it was halted. The sports and entertainment business was halted. And um, the technology of live streaming was always there, uh, but it was sped up by five years because production still needed to happen in a way where clients still needed to get their message out and still needed to get their content out. But how was it gonna be done without in-person shoots? Um, so this technology was just not born overnight, but almost born overnight or you or used overnight. And um, I think it's here to stay because we've been able to prove that we can get the same job done with less people and cheaper for our clients, but still have the same standard of broadcast that we've always had. Um, we do live live streams for our clients and you would never know that there's not a camera person sitting shooting you know, the talent. So how have you done that? So um, it, it's, a, it's a great story. Uh, in June last year, I, uh, we, the company that we own, uh, HJZ Productions, we produced uh, and hired the crew for the West Point graduation. And I hired the director and he said, I need my technical director, no matter what. I need to have this guy there. And I was like, well, I know so many other people that could do the job that haven't worked in a while. He's like, no, I need my guy. So I, something in my gut, you know, relented and said, okay, bring Jamie along. And uh, on the, on the job leading up to the days of the graduation, Jamie and I spoke and he kept telling me how he was gotten to this world of live streaming because of COVID and, and it got my, my brain ticking. And I was like, you know, my temple is not going to be able to do their services in September for the high holidays. Maybe the live streaming is what we need to do. And I started talking to the rabbi and Jamie and we were plotting and planning. And then during the summer, I'm like, there's got to be a way to monetize this. How, how can we do this professionally and, and, and make money? And um, shortly after that, a client called with a strange request and said they needed to do all these different interviews with people all over the country, but their host couldn't leave their house. And I'm like, ding. And then it was like that our live stream business was born. Okay, so... People need technology in their home to have that quality, or does somebody go to their home? How does this work? So uh, the way our bi our business works and the way our workflow works is we have um, many uh, we call them um, camera kits, and uh, it's a high end laptop with a high definition camera and ring light that just sits right on the top of your camera of your laptop. Um, we have a professional microphone that plugs into the USB of the computer. And over the internet, we bring them into our production. And uh, with the lighting and the, because the camera is so high quality, it, it's high def. Uh, it looks as if there's a camera person shooting there. And we can um, 
over the internet, take control of the computer, log in, we can zoom the camera, focus the camera, change the color of the camera and do all, all the person that is sitting there that, that need, they need to do is turn the computer on and connect it to their internet. And then we can take control from there. That is amazing. Okay, yeah. so what do you do about backgrounds? So when we get, when we, um, whenever we do a, a production, we always have like a, a, a technical day we talk, we talk, we say, and the technical day goes through making sure their internet is good, making sure that the equipment works. And we always take a tour of the person's house and get them to show us what each area looks like. And then we kind of choose the best background. Got it. Okay. Because I think that is one of the things that, as I've observed, different people's use of the internet mm -hmm. for business, sometimes you're really distracted by their backgrounds. Yes. We had a situation the other night where um, we were doing a live stream and we rehearsed at a different time of day. And... Um, then the show actually happened. And when the, sh the time of the day the show happened, there was sun coming in through a window that we didn't know that was there. Right. And it was something that we couldn't rectify because we weren't there. And uh, those are some of the things that you kind of have to deal with uh, on the fly. I mean, it was like, it was like the sun was in the room with her. It, Got it. And you know, those are certain things that can't be fixed. So Howie, let me ask you, you do a lot of corporate interviews and um, mm -hmm. you've also done church services, but look, I want to start with um, corporate interviews. So when you set that up, how, what's the process? How long does it take? Do you help people write the script? Do you, mm -hmm. from beginning to end, what would people anticipate? And the reason I ask that is we have people listening who are mm -hmm. uh, execs in corporations that may be interested in trying to figure this out. Yeah, so we've done corporate interviews, we've done medical interviews where you know we interview cancer patients uh, about the drugs they're taking. So the client, um, we, we send our equipment to what the patient or the interviewee and um, we take the time the day before, a few days before we go through the, the technology, the setup, we choose the background like we talked about before. And then, the, then depending on the situation, if, if, it's, they, if the client wants the person to read from a script, right? But you don't want to see them reading from a script. We have teleprompting services where right on their screen, right underneath the camera, we put like five lines of teleprompter and just scrolls. Oh, and they wow. never know they're not looking at the camera at the camera because it's literally right below the camera. And um, the teleprompter operator can hear them talking so they can speed up, slow down, make live changes. Um, if they don't want teleprompting service, then we we kind of put make like a two box effect where the interviewee is talking to an interviewer and we can have that on the interviewee screen, but we can rec record something completely different. So um, the client doesn't have to see that. So you can remove the interviewer. Correct. And make it um, seamless. Yeah. And that way the interviewee has someone that they're talking to and feels comfortable with and has developed a rapport with. What are your biggest challenges in doing this? Technology. Okay. <laughs> the internet. Um, obviously, we try to work around. Uh, a, lot of, a lot more people have poor internet than have good internet. And um, that's a problem in this country. Uh, but that, that is our one biggest struggle is, is poor internet. Wow. Isn't that amazing yeah. that we've come this far and we have all the discussion about 5G and how yeah. are you set up? And, and it is, it is a struggle. I know there are days where internet is gone. They're working on it someplace. Yep. Yep. And with all the kids, you know, doing remote learning that, that is, puts a stress on everyone's home network also. So if the internet was mm, just, you know, just enough to get by with kids at home, putting stress on the network and makes it even, you know, makes it worse. So for corporate interviews and corporate use of live streaming, um, what is the most common use of it? In my head, I have many things going on in terms of what might be possible, but what have you seen as primary uses? 
we, we've done where the, the CEO wants to talk to everyone in the company and we live stream his oh. or her, you know, talking points. Uh, we've live streamed uh, corporate meetings for the company to their, their investment investors. Um, we've done all different sorts of uh, corporate type events. Okay. And it's either we, we're, we're moving towards now maybe doing some hybrid events where there's some people in the, in the audience and we live stream to the, to the rest. Got it. Okay. So I'm beginning to see that as a emerging trend. Yep. Keeping the, and, go ahead. Oh, and, and we can do, do this without ever going to the offices or without being, without bringing in tons and tons of video equipment like we used to um, take up far less space and, and, and deliver the same high quality product. So that raises a very interesting question because when I go to large conferences, events, you mm-hmm. look around, the camera team is huge. They're on the stage, they're taking B-rolls, they're doing this and that. Yeah. You have screens all over the place, right? Yeah. So how do you address that kind of need, especially when people are starting to use that hybrid model? So we can address that net need by having um, the same type of cameras. We can have uh, what is called a, a PTZ, a pan tilt zoom camera. It's like, almost looks like a security camera, but it's high def and better, way better quality. And we can have one person operate up to six cameras at a time with a little joystick in the back of the room. And the rest of the team can be remote. Um, and maybe we have one audio person to deal with the microphones and things like that. Um, but the rest of the team can be remote. When we, when we do our live streams, everybody is in their own either studio or their own home. The director is in his place, the audio person's in their place, I'm in my place, and the clients are all spread out all over, all over. Wow. So Howie, what does that mean for cost? It, it cuts the cost down uh, because there's less people that need to be there. There's um, less equipment. Um, and what it does not cut is on the quality of what can be delivered. Um, so clients are, you know, moving forward towards this technology because one, they get the same product for less money and less people on site. Which is amazing. It's amazing. So COVID has had some very good side effects that we never thought were going to happen, but that's great. So Really, as costs come down, there's no reason why a corporation shouldn't be using this more and more for the, not only for their internal sales for large meetings, but also as a sales tool. Yeah, um, we do a lot of live streams for companies like T-Mobile and Capital One, where they, as, as a giveaway to some of their uh, their their card holders we they do these special live streams whether it involves sporting events or other types of events and we can bring we can bring those broadcasts to their their clients without anyone ever leaving their home um the talent is in their place we ship them the equipment um and same for corporate type meeting corporate you know, type meetings uh, and events that uh, the CEO never has to leave his or her office or his or her, his or her home. It can be done completely remote. Uh, we, we do have on-site technology, but uh, it, it all can be done remote and they can um, reach a larger audience by live streaming their, their message and their content because uh, we can live stream all over the world. And all they have to do is in, in invite the people that they want to invite. It's amazing. So yeah. a global reach. A global reach with without the with without a lot of a lot of the work. And you don't have to pay the cost of travel. I mean, yeah. so the benefits go on and on, don't they? Yes. So Howie, if if a corporation wanted to begin planning this, what's the lead time? How much time should they plan for from beginning to contact you to execution? 
at least a, a month's worth of planning time, prep time leading up to it. Um, are, are there any graphics that need to be designed to, to help, you know, make the, the broadcast a more, um, you know, more snazzy production, we'll say? Um, um, it, are there scripts that need to be written and revised? Um, we need some tech rehearsal and tech time to go over things because we, we just like any other TV show, we rehearse our live streams and rehearse our live streams and rehearse because we don't want we don't want any mistakes. The viewer may not think, may not know there's a mistake, but we know. And, you know, just like any other sporting or entertainment event, we don't want mistakes. So just enough time to uh, plot and plan and give us enough time to rehearse. So a month to a month and a half notice is plenty of time. Okay. And then more recently, you've had also an interest in teaching people transferring yes. your passion to other people. And so you have a course that you offer people. And by the way, we will put um, information about this in the show notes so you can connect and, um, and uh, take on this course and really learn from a master. So tell us a little bit about what that course involves and who, sure. who should attend. Sure. Thank you. So about a, about a year and a half, two years ago, I had the idea of how can I give back? Cause I've always had, I had a mentor when I first started out and I've had several mentors throughout my career and I've mentored a bunch of people that have been very successful. So I wanted to figure out a way to, um, you know, give back. So I developed uh, the broadcast sports course and I, with the help of a uh, team people, we wrote a manual on how to shoot baseball, basketball, soccer, hockey, boxing, all the major sports from every camera position that is used. So if you're starting out and you know, you're coming to do a basketball game and you haven't shot basketball before, you have a general idea of how to go about it before you ever get there. So we developed this two day boot camp where we teach people how to use the equipment and um, what to expect uh, on, when they get on the job site, um, how to go about getting clients, who the clients are, how to contact them, how to do an interview, how to talk to people, how to follow up with people. And so we cover a lot of stuff in this two day boot camp. but then we continue the training for six to 12 months after the fact with uh, once a month calls or uh, Zoom calls or over the phone, over the phone calls, because um, we want to be able to mentor these students into getting into the broadcast sports and entertainment space. Um, and we ran our first course in September and we had five, five students and it was an amazing experience to be able to teach. And we were able to bring in uh, professional cameras, um, uh, big studio cameras and handheld cameras. So they got to completely use and touch them and pack them and build them and uh, do everything that you would do when, if you were working. Okay, so they did this online. So you said uh, this was in person, in person. So they came yep. to your facility to do this. Yep. Okay. Cause I was yep. going to say, how do they get the equipment that they need yeah. to learn this? Okay. Wonderful. And so when you do that, what's the location? Um, we did it uh, just outside of New York city for this first one. And we're going to do another one, I think uh, late spring. And then the idea is to kind of travel to different markets of the country to do this in person. So, you know, the, people that would be good for this course are kids that could, you don't need to go to college to be in this field. Um, although college is great, um, but you don't need to go. So kids that are, you know, wanting to get into the television sports or entertainment field uh, that are in high school and uh, thinking that this is what they're going to want to do, they would be perfect for it. Or kids that went to school for television or some sort of communication program and want to be in the technical, on the technical side of television. So right now, marketplace is changing. We see jobs that exist in the past shifting into morphing into different kinds of jobs. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in the sports, television, streaming business? Are there opportunities that people choose to go into it? What's the, the competition for having a job? So that's a great question. So the competition is is difficult, 
um, because uh, it's everyone is a freelancer. No one, there's no, not really many full-time positions. Um, and it depends where you are in the country. If you're in New York where there's um, three hockey teams, two basketball teams, there's more work in the winter than if you're in Oklahoma where there's one basketball team. So it, it depends where you are geographically. Um, with the onset of COVID, the, the entertainment business, sports, television, sports business also took a very big hit. And um, it's just now starting to come back. Uh, and we're waiting to see when hockey and basketball really start up again in the fall, if um, the, the teams from Canada will be allowed to compete in the United States and vice versa. That, that'll, that makes for more work. Uh, will the away teams bring in their broadcast instead of just taking the home team's broadcast? Um, because usually prior to pre-COVID, um, whenever there was a, let's say a hockey game, there was also, there was one feed and one TV crew for the home team and one feed and one TV crew for the away feed during COVID when the sports started up again, there was just one feed, which means half the amount of people working. So that made it difficult. So hopefully in the fall when everyone's vaccinated, hopefully, and things start to come back, every, you know, the full complement of crew will be needed. So our time is almost over. This has been just such a delight to talk with you. And I've learned a lot. So this <laughs> has been really, really great. And I think our audience has probably learned a great deal as well. One last question for you. What brings sure. you the greatest joy? The greatest joy? My family. Okay. Yeah. My fam family. I learned this. Um, years and years ago, you know, as a freelance, as a new freelancer, you're excited to work, you want to work, you want to take jobs on the weekend, you miss birthdays, but you know what? And I tell this to new people, I've learned family first, you've got to put your family first. And that's what bring, gives me the bring it, biggest joy is being with my wife and kids. So that also and extended that family gives you staying power, perhaps mm -hmm. yeah. for your own business. Howie, anything that you think is important that we've not covered that we should talk about before we close? No, I, I, th I think we covered a lot. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I'm grateful to talk to you. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to help uh, some new clients get their message out through uh, the power of live streaming. So for those of you who are listening, we will have in the show notes information about the sports course, TV sports course that Howie has available. And um, you will be able to connect directly with him. If you have any difficulties or problems, let us know. We will help you make that connection with Howie. So Howie, thank you so much for thank being you. with us. And thank you for those of you who are listening to Building My Legacy podcast. And remember to visit our website at Build Tomorrow with the number two and our social media sites as well. Thanks very much. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell button above. Leave comments. We'd love to hear what you think. And visit our other social media links as well. Thanks much.